Hi, good afternoon, artists. Today we're going to dive into a new unit based off of pop culture lifestyle. So we're going to learn about what is pop culture as well as make a few art projects based on how pop culture affects us and what uh, place it takes in our life. So we will go ahead and start this slideshow here. And again, this unit is going to be called Pop Culture Lifestyle, looking into what is pop culture and how we use it in art. Things that we will be learning throughout this unit, we're going to develop our skills using different materials and tools to create artwork. We're also going to be learning about some of the elements of design. We have already learned about line, as well as positive space and negative space, but we will also be learning about balance and color. For the first lesson, we are going to be creating this awesome boxing poster. It's going to be pop culture icon versus pop culture icon. So before we jump into that, I'll cover this last thing we're also going to learn. We're going to learn how to talk about our art based on our understanding of what pop culture is and how it affects you as an individual. Some of the vocabulary we'll be learning throughout this unit is going to be, of course, pop culture, conflict, color, font, and kerning. Now, we may pre be pretty familiar with this meme here. Popular culture has taken over our lives, especially here recently, with a lot of the things that we have come to be accustomed to, such as this popular meme here of the lady screaming at the cat, blaming him for this and that, right? Um, and I'm sure you've found plenty of examples of this on the internet, uh, giving them kind of a funny story and background where this lady, again, is yelling and the cat responds in almost a smart aleck way. Um, but memes are a part of a pop culture movement that has been pretty recent here in the last few years where people take pictures and then create a type of a little story or comment to go with it. So we'll cover what pop culture is first. Pop culture is in all actuality called popular culture. And what that means is this is generally recognized by people of a society, so us in the United States, as an example, um, as a set of practices, beliefs, and objects that are dominant in a society in a specific period. So anything from TikTok, Snapchat, any of those social media sites that you like to use, those are considered to be a part of our pop culture, especially in this time frame when uh, some of the younger adults and teenagers uh, tend to use TikTok and Snapchat to communicate and uh, show off some of their crazy moves. We also have things like the Marvel comic universe and how comics and their stories have become such a popular thing that movies are being created from them, such as, again, the Avengers, uh, Wonder Woman is the DC universe. So we have a bunch of comic book stories that have stemmed from this and movies that have become very popular because of these stories. Uh, celebrities can also be considered under the pop culture movement. Um, in my time, my favorite is Lady Gaga. That's who's um, down at the bottom here on the left hand side. Um, she's a pop culture icon for myself as she is also uh, a very well-known musician, but for you, you might have things like The Weeknd, Ariana Grande, Selena Gomez, um, or any uh, kind of celebrity from any type of music genre like rap, country, uh, anything of that nature. But popular culture also encompasses the activities and feelings that are produced as a result of interaction with these dominant objects. What are these feelings that they give us? Are we Most of the times we're very excited to use these um, almost in a 
obsessive way. Um, kind of like how Bob Ross has become such an icon of the art world and people are very obsessed or very excited to learn painting from Bob Ross and how he does it. Um, so that's kind of another example of pop or popular culture for you. Um, this image here specifically is going to be an image from a UFC poster that was made by an artist in 2014. If you look at this image, you'll notice that there are two figures, but there is also some font, some writing to give you information on what is happening. As you look at this image, you'll see that the showtime is the name of the fight and that or I'm sorry, is the name of the fighter. And then El Nino is the name of the other fighter. You also have the information of when this fight is going to take place and where it's going to take place. Also note the colors that are used in this poster. What grabs your attention first? Is it the font or is it the picture? Now we'll move right into font. Font is going to be a style of letter that you use within writing or even in an art project, a visual representation. So here you'll see that I've included a couple of examples of different fonts. The one over on this side here in the big rectangle is a kind of easy font. You can tell that it is letters A through uh, X on this one, and it's almost a nature-inspired font with all these extra lines to make it look almost like an otherworldly uh, language. The one on the right-hand side here is considered graffiti. Um, if you have visited the city, uh, you can see on box trains, boxcars, that graffiti is very prominent in the street art scene. Uh, the letters are very stylized. They uh, have their own movement. They have their own color. Uh, but again, font here is covering the style of the letters that you use. Uh, you can use these funky graffiti letters. You can use letters like this nature inspired one. Or like in typing, we use very basic fonts such as uh, Times New Roman or Arial uh, to write out our papers, but in art, this can cover about any type of thing, and they can look just as stylized as anything you can think of. Now to move on to kerning. Kerning is simply a fancy word for the spacing in between the letters in a design. If you look at this first option in the Nike label, you'll notice that the kerning, or again, that spacing in between your letters, so look over here in the K and the E, that little triangle, and those little slivers of white between the N and the I and the I and the K, again, that is kerning. It is a spacing between letters. It is very important to consider kerning within a design of artwork because once you write something down and use a font, you need to make sure that it is legible, that the viewer or the person looking at this artwork can easily read what's going on in that font or writing because of the kerning, right? We want to be able to see what you wrote and see what you're trying to say easily. So that is kerning for you. It's mainly used, again, uh, within the art design world as the spacing in between the font, so the style of your letters. This is just a quick, you try it out for practice. You can Google search an interesting font and write your name in the style. Include kerning to make the letters easy to read, easy to read to viewers. Here I have used a letter generator. Um, it is included within the slideshow if uh, you open that up on that separate application, on that separate page. You can get your own name in graffiti and cursive, anything really that you can think of. But I would rather you practice by drawing it out by hand because that is what we are going to create, how we are going to create our posters. Sorry. Here are a couple of examples of the boxing posters. Uh, the cool thing about these is one, they're pretty old school, um, and two, 
uh, if you look at the colors that they're using, very basic colors, right? We have yellow and we have red. That's the first thing that pops out from these posters other than the gray figures that you see in here. The one on the left-hand side has actual boxers in it. We have Sonny Liston and Cassius Clay. And you can see all the information that is needed to know when the fight is, who is fighting, and uh, when it's taking place all on this poster. You can also see the figures, so the people that are going to be presented in this event. Uh, and that is what uh, this is including here. Notice that the lettering has specific spacing in between it so you can tell what it is that you have written down. This image on the right hand side is basically the same thing, only it's a couple of painters that are presenting an art show. And so they decided to make a boxing poster as well, making it look like Andy Warhol and the squat were going to have a brawl out, but really they were just having an art show. And this is how they decided to format it to get more people to come. Pretty clever way to do that. Here are a couple of other examples of some fight posters here. Uh, these guys are for the UFC. They are stylized by a couple of artists, but as you can tell, we have a few figures here in our posters. These are two different posters. They have also included the date of when this is going to take place the names of the fighters, and also the place in which this is going to take place. Not only did this artist go as far as to include the figures and the information, but this artist also designed the entire background and used specific colors such as red, yellow, blue, and black to really make it uh, come together as an artwork instead of just a cut and paste poster. The one on the right hand side is pretty unique as well. Um, it's got two figures that are going at each other. They almost look like they're smiling. But um, this one just includes the names of the fighters. There's one at the very top and there's one at the very bottom. But there are there is no other information in this one other than the names. So that's something we want to keep in mind as we start thinking about maybe what kind of pop culture icon we are going to use to create these posters. These are just the materials we're using in class, but of course you can always substitute for what you have on hand. Consider your pop characters uh, to be characters that are interesting to you. Um, in my case, I would uh, use Sabrina from The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, and I would have them do a bewitched fight against Hermione from Harry Potter. I think that would be an interesting fight poster. But um, as we go along here, uh, we are going to be creating this fight poster, including a title, the date that this is going to happen, and the names of the characters. You're also going to draw the characters out. This is right here just meant for you to sketch down your ideas. Uh, that way you know what you're doing. But as we are coming down here to an end, this is kind of the beginning of a poster design that my husband has created for this class. It includes Deadpool and Cable there from the Deadpool movie. He's included the names of the characters as well as the characters themselves and the title of the fight. Who's going to be the champion for this? I don't know, but um, that'll be for us to figure out later on. But that'll be something that we are going to create this art unit. Uh, we are going to be using two characters. They can be out of a movie, a show. It can be a cartoon. The only thing that I ask is that there are no political figures and that you do not draw any of your friends or anybody you know. So these are pop culture icons, things that are popular in our culture right now. So definitely think it through. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will get to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.